living the quarantine life. <laughs> Never a dull moment on the front lines of real life, that's for sure. Every day is an adventure, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you, we are living in unusual times, that's for sure. So I just wanted to talk today about why focusing solely on refis to the neglect of the purchase market is stupid and how to build stability through diversification. So you can have multi pillars, multi prongs, multimedia, multi streams of business flowing into your business. So you're not sitting on a one trick pony, a one legged stool and get yourself caught with your pants down when things shift in the market. So you guys all know that the purchase market is the most reliable, success certain and consistent source of business. And yet right now, certainly in the US, we're in a refi boom. And it's been incredible in terms of the historically low rates and the opportunity to help save people money. And so I'm all for helping people save money and making hay while you can, picking up all that low hanging fruit while you can. I'm all about that. I mean, if you got the low hanging fruit, let's pick it. My concern though, is that if you guys get myopically focused on all that low hanging fruit to the neglect of building consistent purchase business and building a system that brings you consistent purchase business, what's gonna happen when rates go up? And all of a sudden, all that low hanging fruit withers up on the vine and you got nada from the purchase business. You got no backup plan, you got no diversification. Now you're caught with your pants down and all of a sudden your income tanks and you're scrambling along with everyone else is crawling out from underneath their refi rocks after the same purchase business, after the same realtors. And you wonder why it ain't working. You wonder why your income's going up and down like a yo-yo. Well, wonder no longer. That is a symptom of a deeper rooted problem, which is while everyone else is chasing after the refi business, you're doing the same. You're following the herd. And so now you're following the herd doing what everyone else is doing, chasing refis. And while you could be building for tomorrow, in summer, you could be preparing for winter. And you could be thinking about what's the next season to come and be proactive and preemptive. Instead, what happens is you get caught up in sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows, thinking summer's gonna last forever. And you don't proactively build that pipeline of purchase business. So when the storm hits and when the refi uh, boom dries up, you're caught unequipped and ill-equipped and all of a sudden your income dries up and you're scrambling in crisis mode. That's the biggest reason why it's stupid to focus solely on the refi market to the ex exclusion of and neglect of the purchase market such that it has you in this very precarious position where you're stressed out and you're freaking out and you're frenzied and you're following the herd and you're in a reactive mode all the time and you're worried where your next deal is going to come from. We got to get you out of that trap. So the way to do that is we got to think differently. It's kind of like if you want to be a successful investor, you don't want to be greedy when everyone else is greedy. You want to be greedy while everyone else is fearful. And when everyone else is fearful, you want to be greedy. So, and when everyone else is greedy, you want to be fearful. So you want to be counterintuitive and countercultural. Do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Because if you want to be a champion, if you want to be extraordinary, you can't afford to think like the ordinary. We've got to zig while everyone else is zagging. So here are a few points to consider as to why relying solely and myopically on the refi market inside of a refi boom is stupid and it's gonna get you in hot water and it's gonna get you in a very difficult position if you don't shift into being more proactive about the purchase market. The first reason is refis alone is a one-legged stool. You know it and I know it. If you're just relying on refis and 80% of your business is refis, you're sitting on a one-legged stool. And that should scare the living bejesus out of you because if you do not have multi-pillars and multi-prongs uh, for business that build stability in your business, if that one-legged stool falls out from underneath you, you're gonna take a big crash. Just like if you're riding on a horse and that one horse, if you got a one-trick pony and that one-trick pony gets sick, you are SOL, my friend. One thing I've learned over the years, as soon as you realize 
your horse is sick, that horse you're riding is sick, it's time to dismount. And I can tell you right now, it's not a matter of if rates are going to go up. It's a matter of when rates are going to go up. And only God knows when that's going to happen. Chances are it's going to happen sometime in the next 6 to 12 to 24 months. And when it does, you got to be ready. And you don't want to be scrambling to do it. You want to feel like you've been proactive all along to prepare yourself so that it ain't no thing like a chicken wang when those rates go up. You're kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubble gum, crushing it, and you're winning and you're taking market share while your lackadaisical, complacent, neglectful, uh, competitive counterparts are scrambling to catch up. You want to be the one who says to himself or herself, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I was proactive and preemptive, not I wish I had, right? So refis alone is like sitting on that one-legged stool. You don't want to be in that kind of a precarious position. It's not a great place to be in business, to be in a precarious position like that. Right now, we're seeing a lot of people freaking out because their one-legged stool is given out due to COVID-19, people relying on one source of business or one arena or one industry, and all of a sudden, that one source is gonzo due to quarantine or people no longer being able to patronize them because they're not able to come out of their house and actually get into their world to transact deals. Next thing you know, they're toast and they're on the verge of bankruptcy. You don't want to be that kind of person. You want to be as diversified as you can so you're least and last affected by market downturns, not first and most. Least and last, not first and most. So the second thing I want to talk about is that refi money is not freedom money. Not all revenue is created equal. You know, you can get five G's from a refi deal. You can get five G's from a purchase deal. You can get three G's from a refi deal. You can get three G's from a purchase deal. But that does not mean that they're all created equal. There's a lot of different qualities and experiences that come with revenue from the refi business that doesn't necessarily equate to the same in the purchase business and vice versa. For example, with the refi deal, there isn't a purchase agreement that goes firm where they're you know, pretty much committed to the deal. They could back out at the 11th hour anytime they want. Once a purchase deal goes firm, it's pretty much a done deal with rare exception, right? So you have more certainty with that revenue. You could be putting in all types of time, energy, and money into acquiring and cultivating and courting a refi client, but then at the 11th hour, it goes gonzo just because ah, they're fickle. There's no commitment, right? Purchase deal, there's a lot more commitment. There's a lot more skin in the game. And there's a physical, tangible reward for their commitment called getting that house, buying that new home, the excitement and the, and the thrill that comes from it. So there's not the same level of certainty. There's not the same level of commitment. There's not the same level of reliability. And... The biggest thing, of course, is refi business is mostly hinging on rates being low. Well, if you want to build your business on quicksand, rely on refis. If you want to build your business on a rock that stands the test of time, build your business on the purchase market. Because here's what I know to be true. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. There's a lot of people losing their jobs. There's a lot of people that have been laid off. There's a lot of people that don't know what's going to happen for the future. I don't know what's going to happen for the future. A lot of people are freaking out. There's a lot of uncertainty. One thing we can be certain of, though, people are going to keep getting into the market. People are going to keep moving up in the market. People are going to keep getting married. People are going to keep getting divorced. People are going to keep dying. People are going to keep buying revenue properties and investment properties. You know what that means? There's going to continue to be transactions every single week, every single month, every single day. The only question is how much of that business are you gonna capture? And if you're myopically focusing on the refi market, I'll tell you how much, not that much. Because while you're neglecting the purchase market and just focusing on that low hanging fruit, you're wise, prudent, and preemptive and proactive competitive counterparts are gonna be leaving you in the dust when they set up all these systems to attract top producing agents, when they set up these systems to be able to go consumer direct and to be able to have multi-prongs, multi-pillars, multiple, multiple streams of business in the purchase market, and you don't even have one or two, and the ones you do are reliable at best, un unreliable at best rather. So you want to be able to be the one who everyone else is thinking, dang, I wish I had been thinking winter in the summer. I wish I had been planning ahead and being preemptive and proactive, not 
wishing you had. So the refi money is not the same as the purchase money. Purchase money gives you freedom when you set up those systems and when you set up the processes because it gives you consistency, freedom from stress, freedom from worry. Sure, there's always gonna be some stress involved with uh, getting transactions done, but it gives you that consistency that allows you to have freedom from the standpoint of worrying where your next deal is going to come from. It gives you that peace of mind to know that you're going to have revenue sufficient to be able to pay your team and have a profit left over and to be able to provide for your family and to be able to play, plan for vacations and to have that consistent, stable production and revenue and income for your family. That's called freedom money, not freak out money. Refi business yeah, it's great when you pick it up, but if you're relying on that solely to the ne neglect of the purchase business, that's called freak out money. It's not the same money. It's not the same quality. It's not the same sustaining longevity, the rock solid base and foundation of a business that actually sets you free versus enslaves you in the cul-de-sac of where's my next deal going to come from? Stressing out, freaking out, and worrying perpetually and consistently because you don't have that solid foundation. We've got to get you set up so you're building freedom money, not just freak out money. Does that make sense, guys? The next thing I want you to consider is that if you're just focusing on the refi business when everyone else is focusing on the refi business and you're not being counterintuitive and countercultural and zigging while everyone else is zagging, you end up chasing realtors with the crowd. So it's the same thing I talked about earlier that when everyone else is greedy as an investor, you want to be fearful. And when everyone else is fearful, you want to be greedy because that's when the best deals are to be had, right? Same thing here. While everyone else is you know, crawling underneath their respective refi rocks, that's when you want to be zigging while everyone else is zagging and taking market share in the purchase business. That's when you want to start to align yourself with top producing agents who make you their exclusive because no one else is calling them. Everyone else is like, ah, we don't need realtors anymore. We got refis. We don't have to you know, get out of our comfort zone and make overtures and reach out and talk to these flaky, apathetic, arrogant realtors. Screw that. Let's go for the easy money, right? So while it's sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows, in the summertime, they're just indulging in summer. They're not thinking winter, right? You want to be thinking wi winter while everyone else is in summer because that allows you to be ahead of the curve. So when winter hits, you're ready, you're prepared, and you're kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubble gum, crushing it, and owning your market because everyone else is snoozing. Everyone else is just enjoying the sunny skies and the, the glory of summer instead of being prepared for winter. So you don't want to be following the herd, guys. If you want to be extraordinary, you can't afford to think like the ordinary. If you want to be a champion, you can't afford to roll like a chump. You've got to be counterintuitive and countercultural. Does that make sense, guys? So the other thing I want to talk about is that it creates, relying solely on refis to the neglect of the purchase business, it creates that income roller coaster from hell. I know none of you can relate to that, right? But you can imagine what it's like to be worrying where your next deal is going to come from, have a couple great months, and then all of a sudden everything dries up and you're doing half the production you're used to. And meanwhile, you know, you're you're trying to find out and figure out how you're going to be able to plan for vacations and things in the future. And you're worried because what if your pipeline dries up like it did last year and the year before that? What if you have to re rely on emergency funds and savings just to make ends meet like you did last year and the year before that? And so it gets you, you know, fearful about the future in terms of planning because it's always so up and down these massive peaks and valleys, feasts and famine. That's why I call it the roller coaster from hell because you don't have that peace of mind and that certainty. Roller coasters are great if you're signing up for it for fun, right? It's like, woohoo, this is fun. But it doesn't get fun anymore when it's causing you stress and strife and it's causing you sleepless nights and it's causing you to worry about the future. That's no longer fun. So roller coasters are great if it's just a short term situation that you're signing up for for an adventure. But the roller coaster from hell that goes from a short term adventure to a long term prison of we can't afford it and a prison of worrying where your next deal is going to come from, that's no longer fun anymore. That's hell. We got to get you out of that because there's 
a better way to live, a live with peace, uh, a life with peace of mind, a life with a sense of certainty for the present and a certainty for the future, a life where you get to create your life by design, not live it by default, worrying and being at the effect of circumstance, be at the effect of your bank account, being at the effect of debt, being at the effect of Oh crap, I got all these bills and I can't afford to pay them. That sucks. That's no way to live, friends. We got to get you out of that. The way to get you out of that is to build that multi-pronged, multi-pillared approach where you're relying more on just the refi boom, low-hanging fruit that shows up. We got to get you setting it up so that that refi business is just gravy, right? You want to set up your business so the refi boom is just gravy where you're making 300K, half a million, three quarters of a million plus just on the purchase business. And then the refi business is just gravy. Like how awesome would that be? If you could see all that low hanging fruit as gravy, as opposed to that's what's actually paying your bills. That's what's actually getting you through the storm. That's what's actually, you know, feeding the family. That's no way to live. If you're relying on gravy just to survive, that's not the way to set up your business friends. You know it. And I know it. we got to set you up so that 80% of your business is coming from purchase, just 20% for refis, and that's gravy. And that 80% gives you a fantastic life, the freedom life, the dream life, kicking ass, taking names, and being the sugar mama or the sugar daddy and the hero for your family. So we got to get you out of that roller coaster ride from hell. The answer is in building stability through diversification. Stability through diversification. Having multiple prongs and multiple sources and multiple streams of business flowing into your business, not just in the refi, but most importantly, in the purchase business, not just having a partner, but having part partners, not just having any partner, anyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror who calls himself a realtor, but the highest quality, the highest producers, the most fun, the coolest cats that are a joy to work with mutual respect, mutual appreciation, mutual loyalty, sending you all their business all the time, putting you on the speed dial, making you their exclusive, working on your terms, not theirs. Not just relying on top producing agents, but also having other sources of business, like from your database, repeat and referral business. You should be getting at least two to three deals per month for every 100 past clients if you have a past client database. Do the math on your past client database. Chances are you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table just in your database alone. So that's another great source. One of the best sources of business is your database. Chances are you're neglecting that too. If you're anything like most mortgage professionals, that's just not your forte. We're not making you wrong about it. We're just saying, hey, if you wanna be a champion, you gotta do what you do best and get the best to do all the rest. You got to start to delegate your weaknesses because where you are weak, someone else is unique. So that's a hand and glove connection where you can start to delegate your weaknesses. So you're liberated to dance in your strengths, to operate in your zone of genius. So now we're talking getting repeat and referral business from your past client database, getting two to three deals per month for every 100 past clients. Do the math on that. That's significant. Chances are, if you've got a database of over 100 past clients, that's worth well over $100,000, $200,000 plus per year to you. On top of that, we've got, I would recommend eight to 12 top producing agents who are making you their exclusive uh, mortgage professional. That right there is worth multiple six figures. Just from that alone, they should be getting, setting you at least one to two deals per month that close when you do it right, the way we teach our clients to do. So notice the diversified nature of that. We're not relying on just a one trick pony. We're not relying on just one referral partner. And then on top of that, you would also get business through other sources of consumer direct marketing, like Google AdWords, where people are seeking out a mortgage. They're actually seeking out a solution. They're not just scrolling on Facebook. Facebook's another great source if you know how to thread the needle on it. There's a lot of ways to lose your shirt and waste your time with Facebook. But we have a proven system to do that where all the heavy lifting is done for you. We create the ad, we create the landing page, we create the thank you page, we create the automated follow-up system that sends text messages, voicemails, and emails to them and lets the cream rise to the top. And for consumer direct marketing, you should be converting somewhere between one and 3%. I know that seems like a very small number, but that's 
the game in the in consumer direct. That's just the way it is. That's the nature of the beast. What you need and what you want is to have an automated follow-up system so that you don't have to be chasing cats and pushing soggy, soggy noodles up hills. You just want the cream rise at the top so you can just be talking to the people who want to talk with you, who are hot for what you've got, engaged, responsive, and are motivated. And you do that, you're going to save yourself a ton of time. You'll be able to self, uh, sift and sort through those leads a lot more efficiently so you're not having to go through each one onesies and twosies one at a time, you know, filtering, filtering through a mountain of gravel just to find one or two gold nuggets. But again, notice the diversified approach. That's what you want to put in place, a diversified approach. That's what allows you to build a 50 million, 100 million, 200 million per year business is having that diversified approach. 80% in the purchase market, 20% or less in the refi market. Even in the midst of a refi boom, that's what you want to have as your goal, as your target. So if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Doran, I love it, I get it. I totally agree with the fact I need to build stability through diversification, but frankly, I'm not great at this marketing thing. I'm not great at technology. Uh, I'm leaving a lot of money on the table. I need some direction. I need some guidance. I need some clarity. I need a game plan. I need something I can just stick the key in the ignition and drive away with. I don't want to have to be the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats. I don't want to have to try and reinvent the wheel. I don't want to have to try and be the copywriter and the, the propeller head and the marketing whiz kid all at once. I want to just be able to set up systems and I want to be able to have those systems pre-done and locked and loaded, turnkey, ready to rock. And if that is you, my friends, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call. It looks like my site supervisor is showing up. <laughs> Nicely done. Site supervisor coming with some uh, sustaining fuel. Thanks, buddy. High five. That's my little man, Ez. Just making sure I'm staying on point. And uh, I don't know what it is about me and doing podcasts, but the last two podcasts I've gotten, uh, I've gotten home delivery, of course, because we're in uh, quarantine, right? Living the quarantine dream right here. So I got a little uh, gourmet French toast. Get that in front of the screen. There we go. A little gourmet French toast that's been left over from breakfast. So got to love it. When the site supervisor throws a little bread underneath the door, it's always a good thing. We'll take it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, guys, if you'd like to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business and we look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, that's where we would show you how. And if not, frankly, we would be the very first pe people uh, to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, you'll leave the call with massive clarity, more clarity than you've ever had before and what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business. So if you'd like to take advantage of that and you're on 100% commission, you're into uh, residential uh, loans as a residential mortgage professional, and you're on 100% commission and you're making 80 basis points or higher and you wanna make at least $100,000 more in the next 12 months than you did last year, then I invite you to book this breakthrough call with me or one of my consultants at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So yeah, just book a call, we'll have a chat, see how we can help you, we'll connect and we'll give you clarity like you never had before. All right, guys. So be blessed. Thanks for hanging with me. This is Doran Aldana, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I hope you got some insights, some good reminders. We often need reminding more than we need educating. So hopefully some healthy reminders to remind you to be zigging while everyone else is zagging and to be rising up while everyone else is shrinking in contraction mode. You want to be in expansion mode. This is the time, friends. There's never been a better time to be expanding while everyone else is contracting. Don't play the turtle. Let your competition play the turtle. Stick their head in their proverbial turtle shells and contract, but not you. You're called to be a lion, to rise up and take territory, to rise up and claim new ground, new market share, and to own your space. So I invite you to do that. If you want to get equipped to do that because you know that your way ain't working, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, be blessed. We'll talk soon. Thanks for hanging with me. Love you guys. Keep rocking on. And we'll talk to you again on the next episode. Peace.